Hello and welcome to Midtown Comics Times Square. I am Henry. It is Wednesday. It is a wonderful new week in comics. We've got a lot of really cool new releases. So if you guys have never checked us out before, we're going to walk up and down this wall. We're going to talk about all the new books that are coming out. And then we're going to stop at the end. We're going to talk about them some more. Lots of cool stuff going on this week. Of course, it's a big week in the world of Midtown. We have a sensational signing tomorrow night with Amy Chu celebrating Women in Comics Month for her new book, Green Hornet Number 1. And... It's just an awesome time to be alive in general. So let's go ahead and take a look at these books. Let's talk about some of these picks of the weeks first. So to start us off, we've got Charles going with Star Wars Adventures. He is a huge Star Wars fan. He loved the Star Wars Rebels series finale, so he's still on that Star Wars kick. Had to pick up the latest issue of Adventures. Then we've got Raf going for Uber. A special shout out to Raf. It's his birthday today, so everybody say happy birthday, Raf. Then we also have Becca picking up Hawkeye issue number 16. It's a bit of a, a somber issue because it is, as the cover says, a fond farewell to our L.A. Bell. It is the last issue of Hawkeye, a great series. Then we've got Jade picking up Dr. Star, which we're going to be talking about in about 30 seconds. A very cool new book from the world of Black Hammer. And then we've got Tom going with Giant Days. He's a big Giant Days fan. He's always wondering, why aren't more people talking about the book? Well, we're talking about the book, Tom, because it's such a good book. Check out Giant Days if you guys haven't already. Now we are going to talk about the new releases. Starting us off, we've got Dr. Star. Now this is a new book from the World of Black Hammer, spinning out of the main Black Hammer book. So it's, of course, going to be entrenched in a lot of that mythology that we have grown to know and love. It's got Jeff Lemire writing it and Max Fumara on art. And Max Fumara is an amazing artist. If you guys have never checked out his stuff, he does a really great job. Really cool, really distinct. I think he's a really fantastic talent. I'm really happy to see him on this. Then we have the brand new issue of Incon Negro Renaissance, a very cool noir series. And we also have Cochelle the Deathless, issue number three from the pages of Hellboy. Hellboy is always great at doing these cool side stories and here is yet another great book. We've also got another Hellboy side book, Rasputin, The Voice of the Dragon, issue number five of five. So now, if you guys were waiting, you guys don't have to wait any longer. It is the entire story in one spot. A great read. Definitely worth checking out. Then when we hit DC, now this is where we get crazy. So first off, we've got the brand new issue of Batman, issue number 42, from Tom King and Mikkel Jenin. A couple different covers here, including this very snazzy Olivia Coipel cover. Of course, Olivia Coipel is doing our Action Comics 1000 variant, so you guys can pre-order that now on MidtownComics.com. But this book has been absolutely crazy. If you guys haven't been checking it out, last issue was really great. We're going to be talking more about it in a little bit, so I won't linger on it too long right now, but it's a great read. We've also got the latest issue of Batman and the Shadow, or should I say, The Shadow and Batman. Yeah, Shadow's better than Batman, right? But this book is really incredible. We've got a couple different covers here I'll show off. I really dig this Brandon Peterson cover because I'm a big Brandon Peterson fan. Really love what this series has been doing with Steve Orlando and Giovanni Tempano doing a great job. We've also got the brand new issue of Batman White Knight. We'll show off a couple different covers here. Really cool series from Sean Gordon Murphy. And, of course, as you can see on the cover... We've got Mr. Freeze popping up in the book, so that's always going to be a little hectic. We also have the brand new issue of Bane Conquest from Chuck Dixon, Graham Nolan, of course the original creators of Bane, I believe. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe there's not a variant to this one, but I definitely know it's very cool and it's a fun series if you are a fan of 90s Batman. Then we've got the brand new issue of Harley and Ivy meet Betty and Veronica. A couple different covers here, including this very cool Jai Lee cover, which I quite dig. And it's been a really fun ride. This is issue six out of six, so it's the end of the run. And it is definitely something you're going to want to check out. If you're a fan of Archie, Betty, Veronica, the whole gang, check it out. Then we have the brand new issue of Harley Quinn. A couple different covers here. I, I think this is great because I like penguins. Penguins are beautiful. They're my... Second favorite animal in all of the wildlife, so I love seeing them on this cover. And I like them much more than I like the penguin, that scoundrel, who has, of course, been uh, popping up in a lot of books lately. And now we get to see him uh, popping up in Harley. Then we have the brand new issue of Nightwing, Untouchable, at the mercy of the Sea Butcher. A really cool, uh, really cool tagline there. And a really cool cover here. I like this Yasmin Putri one where we see Nightwing in chains being dragged down to the depths of the sea. Sam Humphreys, of course, really likes messing with Nightwing. It's like he loves the guy, but, you know, I think he's trying to kill him or something. 
Then we have the brand new issue of Black Lightning Cold Dead Hands, issue number five out of six. Very cool uh, mini series. If you guys have been watching Black Lightning TV show, this is a great book for you to check out. And it was, of course, written by Tony Isabella, the original writer, the original creator of Black Lightning. Then we have the brand new issue of Bombshells United from Marguerite Bennett, a very cool series. If you're into some fun, like, it's basically, it's like pinups that'll just beat you up. And it's great. It's awesome. It's a really fun series. If you haven't checked it out, it is one of those really cool reads DC's been doing for a couple years now. We also have the brand new issue of Deathstroke, and I really just love this Shane Davis cover that's just super cool. Christopher Priest has been doing a great job on the series, but man, these covers are sick. I love them. That's a really cool cover. I love Shane Davis. Then we have a, a somber issue for me. We'll talk about this more in a minute. Uh, Green Arrow, a couple different covers here. We've got the Mike Grell cover, then we've got the Juan Ferreira cover. This is the final issue of Benjamin Percy and... Juan Ferreira on the title. They have uh, been doing a great job for the last 38 issues, and now I'm uh, really curious to see where their adventure leads them. We also have the brand new issue of Green Lanterns. We've got Brandon Peterson, who I just mentioned how much I dig his covers. We've also got this main cover that looks truly fantastic as we deal with superhuman trafficking. And you know, human trafficking is no joke, so I am all for Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz beating up this weird dude with like a skull face because, you know, he looks like he should be punched in the face. Then we've got the brand new issue of Injustice 2, a very cool series spinning out of the hot, hot, hot Injustice video game series. And we also have the brand new issue of the Jetsons, Rosie to the rescue. Of course, if you've been reading the Jetsons books, you know Rosie is one of the best parts. She has a very interesting role in the family dynamic and a very cool modern spin on the classic cartoon. We also have the brand new issue of Justice League, which has one of the coolest covers of the week, I think, with this J.G. Jones variant, where we see the Justice League aren't uh, necessarily the most popular guys on the planet. Just us, League. Please just leave. I think that's cute. I think that's fun. Then we have a cool Mr. Miracle reprint right here, a reprinted edition of issue number five. And we're going to bring it up, and we're going to talk about some collected editions, including we've got the... Buffy Omnibus Season 8 Volume 2. So this is, of course, a nice edition of the Buffy series. If you haven't been checking out the comic, Star Course has been putting them out for a couple years and been having a really great time with them. We've also got the collected edition of the latest Chimichanga Adventures, as well as Lobster Johnson in A Chain Forged in Life. Very cool Hellboy action. Lots of cool things if you are a Hellboy fan. We've also got Batman and Harley Quinn put into a nice hardcover by Ty Templeton and Rich Burkett, which is very cool. We've also got Batman by Neil Adams, book one. Now, this is great if you're an old-school Batman fan, because, of course, Neil Adams had one of the most legendary runs on Batman ever, and now it's being collected in a nice, dedicated collection. So that is really cool, really fantastic. And we've got, ooh, we've got some of the stuff, World's Finest Comics 175 and 76, and some Brave and the Bold 79 through 85, so that's great. It's actually collecting the stuff from before he was even on the main Batman book. So that really enhances the collection. Then we've got some more great Batman adventures with Tales of the Batman by Gene Colan with one of the coolest villains in all of comics, Catman. That's right, Catman's awesome. And it's very cool to see uh, Gene Colan, one of the most legendary creators of all time, his contributions to the Dark Knight saga. We've also got the World's Finest Volume 2 Trade Paperback Edition. Very cool, nice Doc Chenier cover here. Uh, I think that's just really pretty cover, and it's a really cool series if you're a fan of the classic World's Finest. We've also got the third volume of Hellblazer with the Inspiration game. So some cool stuff. Now we are going to bring it back down, and one of the cool new books coming out this week that is a brand new jumping on point is Shade the Changing Woman volu or issue number one. So if you've been reading Shade the Changing Girl, this is now your chance to check out her latest evolution, her new gestation, as uh, the events of Milk Wars were really crazy. And now she's on a whole new adventure, and it's really cool. And it's got some great covers. We've also got the brand new issue of Snagglepuss Chronicles, issue number three. Uh, Exit Stage Left, as it is called. Very cool book, if you haven't been checking it out. We've also got the brand new issue of Superman featuring the Bizarro verse. So this is Bizarro, this is Boy Zaro, this is Bizarro Lois Lane, and this is a Bizarro crypto that's wearing glasses, and there is nothing in the world better than a dog wearing glasses. Fight me, I dare you. Really fun series if you haven't been checking it out. We've also got the very cool John Boy cover as well, which is, of course, an homage to Superman number one by uh, Pat Gleason from the beginning of Rebirth. Then we've got the brand new issue of Wildstorm, issue number 12. A lot of fan demand. 
for the series. A bunch of cool covers here. We'll show them off. And of course, this is the money one right here. This is the Jim Lee Grifter cover. That's really cool. Now we do move on and we've got an amazing book. We've got the brand new Green Hornet series from Dynamite Comics. Now this is a really cool book. It's by Amy Chu. She's doing a great job with German uh, Euro Mouse on art. And if you have not been checking out what Dynamite has done with the Green Hornet books, they've been having a great time. This is actually a really cool sequel series to the Kevin Smith run from a couple years back. So if you guys check that out, which was super awesome, and I do actually recommend you go check it out. It is a really great read, and uh, there's a whole bunch of covers here. We'll talk about it more in a minute, because uh, I can't help it. And of course, we do have Amy herself coming by to join us tomorrow. Mike McCone cover, that's the one I picked up, uh, for a signing here at Midtown Comics Times Square tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Very nice, very cool book. We've also got Bloodshot Salvation, issue number 7, from Jeff Lemire and Renato Guedes. Uh, very cool stuff here. Renato Guedes is, of course, an amazing artist. Some great stuff and some great covers on the series. Now, we do start hitting more of our indie books here. So we've got Assassinistas from Black Crown, which is, of course, an imprint of IDW. Very cool read. And we've got the latest issue of Atomic Robo in the Specter of Tomorrow, a nice continuation of the Atomic Robo saga. We've also got Frankenstein Alive, Alive, issue number four from uh, Steve Niles, and it's got the art of Bernie uh, Wrightson. This is uh, the last work that he did, and just flipping it open, you can just see it's a beautiful book. Really incredible stuff. Then we've got the Ghostbusters Annual, a couple different covers here. If you are a fan of the Ghostbusters comics, which you should be, because they're awesome. It is a really cool uh, adventure. We've also got the brand new issue of Scarlet Strike Force, issue number three, as well as this giant book, Highest House. Really cool, brand new uh, book. We've also got Gem and the Holograms Dimensions, issue number four, as well as the October Faction with a new series, Supernatural Dreams. So if you're a fan of the October Faction, they've done a bunch of different mini series. This is, of course, a must have for you. We've also got a brand new book from IDW with the Spider King number one. Very cool read, as well as the brand new issue of Star Trek Boldly Go. And then we've got some cool stuff coming out from Image. And if you look at that cover, you might not know what it is. But it's a cool wraparound virgin cover because that's what Image is doing all month long for the month of March. They're doing these nice wraparound covers to showcase the art for, of course, East of West, which is back. Jonathan Hickman, Nick Dragota, and it is a stellar read. We've also got the brand new issue of Elsewhere, issue number five. A couple different covers here. And we've got Extremity as well. So I got to I gotta pull out the one with the cover so you know what book I'm talking about. But dude, just look at this cover, man. This is awesome stuff. Wraparound cover. Really cool. You know what I think I'm going to do for these wraparounds? I think I'm going to do this every time I see one. I'm just going to do that so you can get a nice look at the art. Very cool. It makes you want to buy two copies, right? That's, that's the right answer. Then we've got the brand new issue of The Fix, as well as a brand new series from Image, Gideon Falls. Now, we've got a whole bunch of different covers here, and this is, in fact, Gideon Falls in a virgin cover, which is very cool. We've got the nice Jeff Lemire cover, and as we scroll down, we've just got a couple cool different variations on the series. Jeff Lemire and, of course, artist Andrea Sorrentino are known for a number of different books they have worked on together over the years. They did a great job on uh, Green Arrow. They did a great job on Old Man Logan. But now they get to pursue their own independent venture. And I am very excited to see uh, what they can do when they just get wild. Then we've got the brand new issue of I Hate Fairyland. A couple different covers here. We'll show off another one of these. Of course, Scotty Young's masterpiece. A lot of news with Scotty Young lately. He was just announced to be doing uh, the words, the writing for the new Deadpool book. And if you want to see a sense of his weird uh, sense of humor, check out I Hate Fairyland because that'll give you a great idea of what to expect. Then we have a brand new book from Image that I know a lot of people are super excited about. We've got Oblivion Song, issue number one from Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo Di Felici. Now, this is really cool. Like, actually, objectively, this is super cool. It's a fun adventure. Um, fun being a light word. But it is a really cool series where um, we get to see uh, our protagonist, Nathan Cole, going into, like, hell, basically. And we'll talk about it more in a minute. Very cool. We've also got Prism Stalker, issue number one. Another 
brand new series. Now we are going to bump up and we're going to work in reverse talking about some of these cool collections including Walking Dead Volume 29. Wow! 29 trade paperbacks. Can you name that many books that have 29 trade paperbacks? Now, do me one better. Name me a book with 29 trade paperbacks where they're all written by the same guy and what, 28 out of 29 are drawn by the same artist? That's pretty insane. This book is definitely insane, and if you're a fan of Walking Dead or you just checked out the return to television a few days ago, check out the book so you know what's coming up. You won't regret it. I mean, you'll probably be really upset and depressed, but, you know, you'll be happy, I guess. So, yeah. And we've got uh, the collection for Firebug, a very cool series, as well as the X-Files Origins, Dog Days of Summer. Then, as we continue down, we've got Mecha Boys as well as the latest Judge Dread, the Blessed Earth trade paperback collection. Then we've got Why Art, very cool original graphic novel, as well as We Are or We Ate Wonder Bread from Nicole Hallerndon. Then we've got the Vietnam Journal uh, by Don Lamox. We've got Theatrics. We've got Tatters. Then we've got Swords of the Swashbucklers, and that just looks like some cool old school adventure from uh, Dynamite, bunch of great creators, uh, Jeff Isherwood and Colleen Duran, who does great stuff, and uh, Bill Mantlo and Jackson Geis, of course, headlining. We've got Supernaut, then we've got Safe Area Garage, the Red Rising Son of Aries, and the War Mother graphic novel. Now, if you are a fan of some classic stuff, we've got Cap and Stubbs and Tippy, which looks adorable. Some cool classic strips. We've also got the Image Expo preview book. Now, this is great. Uh, Image Expo was last week. It's where all the different creators pitch their upcoming projects, and so it's your great way to find out what's coming down the pipeline. We've also got the Wildcats by Jim Lee Absolute Edition. And, oh, this thing's a monster. This thing is crazy big, crazy huge, but it's Jim Lee in, like, a prestige edition so it is definitely a worthwhile investment. you got to love Jim Lee any way you can take them. And then we've also got the latest collection of Super Sons, as well as Brian Hitch's entire Justice League of... Then we've also got Justice League of America Volume 3 from Panic in the Microverse. So it's a lot of cool stuff. As we whip back over and we conclude our image uh, collections... We've got Savage Dragon issue number 232, Entering the Wraith, as well as the brand new issue of Scales and Scoundrels from Sebastian Gurner. Really fun series as well. And then we also have the brand new issue of The Spread and a couple different covers here for The Walking Dead. I love this 15th anniversary cover by Bill Sinkwich, which of course highlights The Governor. And then one book I will be taking a little bit more time to talk about is with The Wicked and The Divine. We've got a couple different covers here. We've got the main cover, we've got the variant cover, and of course, because it is March, we've got the very cool wraparound cover from Jamie McKelvey, and that's just beautiful. That is just absolutely beautiful, just like the book. Then we have a bunch of cool stuff from Marvel, and starting us off, we've got the Ant-Man and Wasp prelude. Of course, Ant-Man and Wasp coming out this summer. And it is sure to be a hot ticket, but if you want to know what's going on in the smallest world of the Marvel Universe, we have the prelude, so you can check that out. We've also got the brand new issue of Avengers No Surrender, issue number 683, and my boy Beast is on the cover, so you know it makes me happy. Jim's up, Mark Wade, Al Ewing, and in this issue, Paco Medina on art, and I'm a big Paco Medina fan, so that made me happy. Now, as we continue on, we've also got the brand new issue of Rise of the Black Panther. A couple different covers here. We've got the Superhero Adventures one, but of course, we've got this very pretty cover as well. And then we're going to bring it up and talk about some more collections. We've got Avengers the Infinity Gauntlet, a great read if you want to know what you're getting into with uh, the upcoming Infinity War. And we also have the Daredevil by Mark Waid and Chris Samney Omnibus. And if you've never read their run, do it do it this way this is the way to do it it is gorgeous it is beautiful and it has some of the greatest creators of the modern era all in one place it's beautiful it just makes me so happy then we've got the deadpool minibus volume zero i'm pretty sure whoever works at the marvel trade department making the deadpool collection this is just having a great laugh at how ridiculous some of these are labeled but some really cool stuff here as we got what do we have we've got 
Oh, this is great stuff. This is Deadpool Suicide Kings mini, which is really fun. Wade Wilson's War, which is one of the weirdest meta things I've ever read. Deadpool Pulp. Deadpool Pulp was awesome and really dark and twisted. And then we've got some more appearances, including the Amazing Spider-Man Annual, Deadpool Annual, Incredible Hulk's Annual, which is a crossover between the three books. And yes, I do know all this off the top of my head because I remember when all this came out. And they were all pretty cool. Actually, a really good time in Deadpool. Then we've got... Now this makes me happy. This is the entire uh, Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev run on Moon Knight, all collected in one hardcover edition. A lot of people talked about Moon Knight because Moon Knight has become one of the hottest properties in Marvel for fun, creative flourishes. And in this volume, which has previously been out of print, like horribly out of print, like good luck tracking it down, you're going to be paying an arm and a leg for individual trade paperbacks. Now it's all in one spot. In this one, Moon Knight goes crazy, and his kind of crazy manifests in the form of three different personalities where he believes that he is Captain America, Spider-Man, and Wolverine. And they are talking to him while he is running around carrying Ultron's head. I cannot believe what a bizarre pitch it is, but you got to read the book to see how it plays out. Now, as we continue on, we've got The Sentry by Paul Jenkins and Jai Lee. Of course, The Sentry has been talked about because a lot of cool announcements have come out, including the brand new series by Jeff Lemire that will be coming out soon. And then we have Deadpool and Spider-Man in one place. That's right, Spider-Man Deadpool by Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis. Now, this is great because it collects all of their issues together. So they're a little in and out. So it's 1 through 5, 8 through 10, 13 through 14, and 17, 18. So all their adventures in one spot if you're a fan of one of the most uh, influential creative teams in the history of Deadpool. And then we've got The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl Hardcover Edition, Volume 3 from Ryan North and Erica Henderson. Henderson, not Henderson. Henderson. Great book. Awesome stuff. Look at all those cute squirrely outfits. I wish I had that great of a wardrobe. I wish I had a giant poofy squirrel tail. You know, there's probably a lot of cleaning you can do with that. It's probably pretty utilitarian, you know. Then we have the brand new issue of Captain America, issue number 699. We've got the thing, we've got the Hulk, we've got the Cap, and they're in the future, and it's gone horribly wrong. But the book has gone horribly right because it's been fantastic with Mark Wade and Chris Samney, who I was just talking about. So check it out. Matt Wilson on colors. Amazing stuff. Now, as we move on, we've got the brand new issue of Doctor Strange Damn Nation, or should I say Tar Nation, as they do those fun little variant covers. A couple different covers here show them off as we pan on down, including this nice one from Greg Smallwood, which I really dig. As we get to see more of the uh, Marvel Knights characters jumping into the story, you can see we've got Iron Fist, we've got Ben Riley, we got Brother Voodoo, we got Ghost Rider, all taking on Mephisto. It's going to be a great ride. Then we have the brand new issue of Hawkeye, unfortunately, the last issue of Hawkeye. It's been one of my favorite books of the last year. Great run from Kelly Thompson and Leonardo Romero with Jordi Belair on colors. Oh, it makes me so happy. I'll talk about it more in a minute. Then we've got the brand new issue of She-Hulk, Jen, Wal Jen Walters Must Die. A very cool cover here as we also see a conclusion to this era of the character. And then we move on, and we've got one of the biggest books that Marvel's got this week. That is right. It is Infinity Countdown. Now, Infinity Countdown is, of course, you know, it's got Infinity in the name. And it's got, on a couple of these covers here, you can see that they've got some of the Infinity Stones. We're getting some crazy stuff. We've got this nice Thor variant cover. We've got one with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Of course, the Guardians of the Galaxy creative team of Jerry Dugan. And Aaron Cooter are taken over for this storyline, which sees the Marvel Universe explored in a way we haven't seen in quite some time as the Infinity Stones become the forefront of this latest cosmic clash. Now, as we continue on, we've got issue 11 of Black Bolt from Salamid Ahmed and Christian Ward. Some great stuff there. And we also have the brand new issue of Spider-Man, Sandman. Looks like uh, he's got something in his nose. That's not a booger. That's Miles Morales. And, you know, if he doesn't pick that thing out, he's going to get an infection. And it's going to go horribly for him. But the book is going to go wonderfully for us. We're all going to like it. Because, you know, who doesn't like Sandman? Now we have a big book, another big book, a huge book, some would say. As we've got the brand new issue of Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 797, as Go Down Swinging begins. That's right. Is the final storyline for Dan Slott, who has been on the book for 10 years. Oh my God, 10 years. He's written more Spider-Man than anybody in the history of Spider-Man ever. That's crazy. That's mind-boggling. And the story is absolutely ridiculous. you got to check it out to see what's going on. As we move on, we do have the brand new issue of Star Wars. We've also got 
the brand new issue of Venom, which is the conclusion of the Poison X storyline setting up the upcoming Venomverse uh, miniseries. We've also got the True Believers of Spider-Man, and it's got the first appearance of Venom, which is, of course, well, first appearance is, you know, black suit and all that. It's actually Spider-Man 300, so it's very cool, very good stuff there. We've also got the brand new issue of Iceman, as well as Rogue and Gambit. And then we've got X-Men Gold, which does have uh, a couple different covers here. Boom! Main cover. Awesome stuff. And then we have X-Men Red. So it's a lot of stuff. It is a fun week to be a comic book fan. So there we go. What a week. Crazy stuff all over the place. Very exciting. I've got this giant stack of books and now we're going to go through and we're going to talk about them a bit more in depth so first off we've got dr star and the kingdom of lost tomorrows what a cool name man that sounds like an old pulp novel and that's what this book really has been in a lot of ways is black hammer is a, a throwback to yesteryear it's got a bunch of these cool adventures and now we get to see them explored in a new way and i talked about it before with max from Wera's art he really is an awesome uh, and unique visual entertainer as he's got a very cool way of stylizing particularly with his faces he gets uh, these interesting shapes that we don't normally see and I really dig that I actually really loved years ago uh, he did a really great run on the Amazing Spider-Man book he did the gauntlet he did a couple issues that featured Rhino and uh, it was incredibly heartbreaking and that is in large part due to his incredibly uh, talented art now we do have a big week from DC as we've got the brand new issue of Batman. So this is great. We've got Tom King and Mikel Jenin. And if you guys missed out on last issue, you missed out on quite a lot. As we see, Poison Ivy has kind of decided, you know what? I think I've had enough of just about everybody. I'm just going to do whatever I want and I'm going to take over the planet. And now she is doing so. And uh, the only two people that have escaped her are Batman and Catwoman. So it's now Batman and Catwoman taking on just about everybody you can ever think of. And that is a really one-sided fight. I feel bad for everybody else. Then we have the brand new issue of Batman, Sean Gordon Murphy. Some really cool stuff here. I'm just going to, you know, I don't want to show off too much with this book because it's a miniseries. Sometimes with the miniseries, I kind of like to let the mystery live on. But let's just show you why Sean Gordon Murphy is one of the best Batman artists that we have seen in quite some time because that is awesome. That is the Batmobile. That is what you that's what you paid for. That's exactly what you want to see and that's really cool. And I like that uh, Sean Gordon Murphy really does a great job of exploring the world of Gotham City. Let's see if there's anything else I can show you. Nope, spoilers. Uh well, maybe. Eh. Cold things happen. Dun dun dun. But yeah, it's a really great read. If you haven't been checking it out, he's doing a great job. Matt Hollingsworth pitching in and helping him out. Doing a great job. And now a book that is near and dear to my heart. We've got Green Arrow, issue number 38. So I want to sh show this one page that uh, Juan Ferreira has been showing a bunch in some of his preview art online. So let's see uh, where it is. Yep. This, this gorgeous guy right here. Of course, uh, Green Arrow, Oliver Queen, looking rather uh, dapper. And this book has been a really fun run. I am not, so traditionally speaking, I'm not a huge Green Arrow fan. If I'm talking about my favorite archers, I normally lean on Hawkeye. But this book has completely sold me on not only Oliver Queen, but the world of Star City and the world that he uh, has to encounter on a daily basis. Really some great stuff featuring the Emerald Archer. What really got me hooked was his treatment of... Uh, his supporting cast as well of course black canary playing a major role in the series and if you haven't been checking it out just trade paperbacks pick it up pick up the new issue see it off into the sunset and uh follow the creators because they do some really great stuff i'm really excited for what the future brings we've also got the brand new issue of shade the changing woman from cecil castellucci and marla zarcone with kelly fitzpatrick as well doing the colors so we've got a trifecta of terrific creators and we open up this book and we see the person everybody's been asking for, Shade the Changing Man himself, from, of course, the original Vertigo series, is appearing in this book as we explore a new facet of the changing mythology 
of the characters. Uh, of course, Milk Wars was a bit of a crazy event for all of the young animal books, so we have a new chapter and a new way that you can jump into the series. So if you haven't been reading it previously, now is the time to get in. Now we've got a fun book that I really appreciate existing. Uh, we've got Superman issue number 42. And one of the reasons I really... Patrick Gleason, man, he can just draw Bizarro for like ever and that would make me happy. But let's just show you this cool, nice double page spread. Of course, we've got some really cool stuff here as uh, Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason have crafted a wonderful yarn with uh, Superman and his family over you know, the last 40-something odd issues. And now we're getting to see Bizarro and his weird inverted version of, you know, the Superman family dynamic, which, of course, always plays an important part in this stuff. And like I said before, we've got Bizarro Crypto wears glasses, and that just makes me happy. That's silly. That's fun. That's why I read comics. You know? Now we have the brand new issue of Green Hornet. Now this is really cool. So if you haven't ever checked out Green Hornet before I get it, you know, maybe the, the stars weren't aligned properly. Maybe you didn't get a chance. This is your chance. This is a brand new jumping in point for the Green Hornet mythology as we follow the continued adventures of a brand new Green Hornet. And so Britt Reed has gone missing. And now the mystery ensues as... Uh, Kato and his daughter are forced to track down some clues, follow the mystery, and uh, you should follow us here tomorrow when we have Amy Chu, of course, the amazing writer of said comic, here in this very store, in this very spot, probably. She's going to be, I'm sitting in the same chair that she will be sitting in. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's really going to be a great event. And we hope to see you guys here tomorrow at 7 o'clock in Times Square. Now we've got Gideon Falls. We got the brand new issue. I grabbed this one because it doesn't have any flavor text on it, and I think it's a nice way to just show off the pretty art. But, you know, I really got to show you even more as we have a brand new series. This is cool. This you never see. I don't know how you draw like this. It manages to draw to look like a panorama of the inside of a room, which is crazy. How do you make how do you make a single flat image look like an entire room in a like 360 camera lens? Andrea Sorrentino finds a way. I am impressed. And I am really excited to see what this new book has to offer. And uh, this is cool. We got a nice little book quote on the back here from Jeff Lemire saying, Andrea Sorrentino is a virtuoso artist. He doesn't just draw the stories I write. He expands the ideas into bold new territories I never could have imagined, challenging me and the reader to keep up with him. Wow. All right, man. Jeff's a big fan. And you guys should check it out. Now we have a series that I know a lot of people are excited about. We've got Oblivion Song, which is the latest and greatest from Robert Kirkman. That's right. It's a bold new number one. It's been a while since uh, Kirkman's actually done a new series. He's been doing Invincible. He's been doing uh, Walking Dead. I think the last time I saw him doing a new book might have been Haunt, which was uh, quite some time now. So we get to see some cool stuff here. Basically, the short version of this is that uh, the city of Philadelphia loses 300,000 citizens. I'll show you some of the action while I'm talking loses 300 citizens, or 300,000 citizens, sorry, to another dimension. This weird dimensional portal opens up, and they're basically transported to hell, which is crazy. And there's one man, Nathan Cole, who is dedicated to finding his brother, who has been lost in this mysterious other side of the world. And it's a really great read. Uh, I've never checked out the art of Lorenzo Di Felici before, but whoa! awesome stuff and what i think is really great at the end of the book robert kirkman gives a little letters page you check out the letters page it's great but he talks about they're already working on issue number 13 now so they're working way in advance so this is a book that you guys can check out look forward to without having to worry about any delays in the book now one book that uh does do a great job of keeping schedule even though it's been on a brief hiatus with a couple one shots is wicked and divine now i grabbed both of these covers here that showcase the incredible artistic talents of jamie mckelvey and i literally cannot flip open this book to show you anything because i will ruin your day if i do this book is heart-wrenching and if you're a wicked and divine fan you guys already know this the book has been so fun and now as we are getting ready to uh, launch this closing chapter of the series Things have just gone off the rails, absolutely crazy, and it is definitely a great time to catch up on the series and pick up the latest issue. Now we hit Marvel, and we've got a bunch of cool stuff, including the brand new issue of Avengers, issue number 683, and I wanted to show this off because, first off, I love Paco Medina, and second off, it's got Beast, and Beast is my boy, 
Uh, I love him. He is my favorite Marvel character. So anytime he gets to really get the spotlight, I get really happy. As we see, he's uh, going on a crazy adventure to try and save Jarvis, who has been, uh, let's say, under the weather uh, these last few issues. And we also get to see some great stuff with Nadia, of course, the Wasp, as she is trying to tackle this uh, threat of the pyramids that is going on. We've had these weird, like, little pyramid things. We don't know much about them showing up on the planet, causing havoc everywhere you look. And uh, you should look into this book to see what goes on. Also, the last page is crazy. Crazy. I can't wait for the next issue. Now we've got the brand new issue of Captain America, issue number 699. We are one issue away from 700. 700 issues of Captain America. Good on you, Steve. Now we've got some great stuff here as we see that... Uh, as we see, the Cap is stuck in the future, but he's rallying the forces to try to repair the divided states of America. Things are not looking good in the far, far future that maybe isn't too far. Maybe things aren't uh, as peachy as we think, but this book is incredible. Mark Wade is doing an amazing job, and it's great to see him back on the title after like 20 years away. Then we've got the brand new issue of Doctor Strange Damnation from Donny Cates and Nick Spencer. Of course, the two guys you would expect to be on this book because this is a follow-up to a lot of the plot threads from Secret Empire. And it is, of course, starring Doctor Strange, which Donny Cates writes. Now, we've got the art of Simon uh, Kozvransky on here. And we've got a bunch of cool characters popping up. You can see Blade. You can see Wong. You can see that we've got all the guys that should be fighting Mephisto actually fighting Mephisto. So it's great because it's not always an adventure that we get to see. It's so rare to see a couple of these characters, so it's great when they do pop up, and especially because we've got an amazing creative team delivering a top-notch book. Now a book that everybody's going to be asking a thousand questions about, Infinity Countdown number one from Jerry Dugan and Aaron Cooter. And uh, there's, there's a touch of Mike Diodato in there as well. Mike Diodato does do this uh, this first page. So some great stuff here. Does a uh, Wow, he's, he, yeah, that's cool. Anyways, uh, so we get some great stuff going on as we see that Drax is guarding the Power Stone. And the war is on for the Infinity Stones. And we get some crazy adventure. I don't want to tell you everything because, one, if I tell you everything, then you're going to know everything. And, two, if I tell you everything, then the people in the store are going to hear everything and then they're going to kill me. And that would be bad because I cannot spoil for you who comes back in this issue that was super awesome that I totally thought was supposed to be dead. And we get some crazy stuff. And I can't tell you, but I can tell you, you're going to want to check out the book. And if you have been checking out some of the other books that Marvel's been putting out lately, maybe you saw the clues. Great read. Then we've got another big book. We've got Amazing Spider-Man issue 797. Go down swinging. Spider-Man is going down as Norman Osborn is taking the fight to him like never before. And as we see... Storm and Norman's not looking too happy. He's kind of looking a little murdery. And uh, unfortunately, that cannot be good for Spider-Man. As we get ready for the end of Dan Slott's run, I am very excited to see where this book goes as we get ever closer to 800 issues of Spider-Man and like 200 of those written by Dan Slott. So that's crazy. Then we've got the brand new issue of Venom, issue number 163, as Poison X concludes... And if you guys have read the last couple issues of this crossover, it's been between Venom and X-Men Blue. We've seen uh, the Poison X symbiotes that are from uh, they're from the Edge of Venomverse stuff that went on a few months back. So if you were checking out a lot of that stuff, you know what I'm talking about. They're like these weird, tainted, evil, evil symbiotes. And if you thought symbiotes were bad, these things are like somehow worse. So it's really cool. It's really crazy. And uh, I'll show you this page. It doesn't show you too much, but it does show you that maybe things aren't looking too great for the X-Men. And I'm very curious to see where things go from here. Now, one thing i got to talk about, of course, are these true believers. Now, these true believers, for you, true believers, are only a dollar, which are great. So they're reprinted editions of some classic Spider-Man adventures. We've got Venom symbi Symbiosis and Venom vs. Spider-Man. So this is actually Web of Spider-Man. And this is Amazing Spider-Man 300. So these are some classic comics and some top-notch creators working on it. Um, we really get... It's really cool. We actually really get spoiled with these because they're a dollar and they're great. And you can see 
some of the early adventures of Venom with some iconic art from iconic creators such as Todd McFarlane. So it definitely is something that you are going to want to check out. And look at that. It's even got an advertisement for the new Venom book that Donny Cates is going to be writing. So Donny Cates, the Doctor Strange guy, is going to be jumping on Venom soon. So you should definitely catch up on all your symbiotic needs. Then uh, we'll close off with a double dose of X-Men as we've got the brand new issue of Rogue and Gambit. This is my favorite X-Men book coming out right now because Tele Kelly Thompson is an amazing, amazing writer doing some really cool stuff. And if you haven't been checking out the book, you are missing out a great opportunity to see one of Marvel's finest couples brought back together. But are they back together? Aren't they? They're, they kind of hate each other. They're kind of reflecting on a lot of things. You know, things are always going to be complicated with your ex. You kind of can't avoid that. But... You definitely should not avoid this book. You should come clamoring for it because it's awesome. And then another amazing book is X-Men Red from Tom Taylor. Of course, this is the latest and greatest adventure of Jean Grey and her crew. Jean Grey has returned to the land of the living, and she has assembled a brand new team. And if you guys read last issue, I won't tell you who the villain is that appeared at the end of last issue on the off chance you didn't. You should come by and pick it up. But... We see that uh, we've got a new approach to the X-Men as Jean Grey is trying to be proactive in a way that the X-Men never have before. Doing a lot of outreach programs, and I think it's really great, and I think it's innovative. Awesome. Check it out. Read it. And yeah, and that's it. It's a wonderful week. There's a lot of great books. This is a huge week in comics, so there's a lot of stuff for you guys to enjoy. Like I said, we've got a really cool signing tomorrow with Amy Chu for Green Hornet. It's going to be a lot of fun, 7 o'clock here at Times Square. And, of course, it is March, which means it's Women in Comics Month. So we are celebrating Women in Comics all month long with special featured sections at all of our stores featuring some of the greatest creators in the world of comics. So you want to pick up some of the great works of the greatest ladies working in the industry today. Come by our stores. We've got them on sale. It really is a fantastic time to be a comic book fan, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Like this video? Be sure to let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to share, subscribe, and follow us on all of our different social media platforms. Find us on Facebook. Find us on Instagram. You already found us on YouTube. But there's tons of stuff for us to enjoy together. You can shop with us, of course, on MidtownComics.com. And hopefully we'll see you guys here soon. Mm -hmm.